So next I'd like to welcome um, Elias. Um, Elias Abtanius is a senior lecturer with UNSW Sydney. Um, he's a familiar face to AXA and he's actually in fact a part, uh, a part of AXA. He's a project lead on the UNSW PV50 mission and also the deputy director of AXA. Um, he will be presenting about um, parts of balloons today. All right, thanks, June. Uh, good afternoon. So you've heard about uh, high altitude balloons. This is another presentation. Um, the picture that you see there, you've seen one already. It's not from a satellite. It's from a high altitude balloon. It's a mission that we actually um, did. Uh, I mentioned earlier that uh, when I was introducing uh, Mark, that I got, I have the privilege of working with uh, a bright group of undergraduate students and some postgrads. Um, uh, the society is called BlueSat, and this is uh, run. By, this is actually done by them. The project. Now, I will be talking about the actual um, project for this. So, the project is a is a high altitude uh, balloon borne synthetic aperture radar. Just a bit of history. Um, the balloon activities here. Well, thinking about balloons here started uh, as far back as 2010. Originally, it was intended. To to be a vehicle sort of replacing um, satellite launches because they were so, so expensive. Um, that didn't, didn't actually happen. Instead, we started doing uh, small uh, payload launches. Um, that's why I asked Brad, uh, less than four kilograms. Uh, that's that's a, what's called a small um, uh, balloon. We started looking for applications for this. Um, what can we not do in balloons just for the sake of launching a balloon? The pictures are nice, they're good for outreach. Uh, that's one of our goals, but we needed to do something else with them. And this, I was at a conference in the States, uh, uh, caught up with a friend of mine from the University of Pisa, who's an expert in synthetic, synthetic aperture radar, and we came up with the idea of um, actually fly, flying the radar on the balloon to image the ground. So what's the idea behind this? Um, we, uh, at the moment, doing remote sensing, uh, doing radar imaging, you either do it using uh, uh, UAVs or, or piloted aircraft, or you do it using using satellites. In a lot of cases, well, these are expensive, uh, a lot more expensive than the balloons. They require infrastructure. You need to launch. If you're doing uh, um, piloted aircraft, and we'll see, we got the project is funded by NATO. Um, so let me just keep track of the time. Um, so. <coughs> Uh, yeah, so if, you, if you're doing flying piloted, air, you, uh, piloted aircraft, you put in a, um, you need a pilot, but obviously that costs money, puts a pilot's life at risk if something happens. We'll see that that's uh, relevant to someone like NATO. Um, if you're doing UAVs, you still need the infrastructure in terms of uh, <coughs> airports or so forth. For um, satellites, you're dependent on the uh, revisit times. Balloons offer you a, a really easy um, solution of just doing rapidly uh, deployable systems. So we pitched the idea to NATO. Um, obviously, they're interested in the military side of things, but we, we focus on the um, um, disaster monitoring and so forth. For, uh, we said, you know, putting a pilot's life at risk is not you know, what you want. Competing um, uh, systems for uh, high altitude platforms, like some are done by Raytheon and so forth, they, they cost billions of dollars. Um, they're decked with a lot of um, technology. What we proposed was a really simple uh, solution that I'm just going to talk about. We received 300,000 uh, 300, euros from uh, NATO. So we have two nodes, the University of Pisa and the NSW. Um, I did the NSW side of things. We do the payload, we do the platform, they're doing the payload. And we received another $7,000 from uh, um, the Australian technology um, so, from Hatsi, the objective is to uh, deliver a high altitude balloon platform that carries synthetic aperture radar as, an, as well as the necessary mission plan and execution tools. From our point of view, we're focused on the uh, platform because we want to be able to take that radar out, put something else in, and fly it. So. I'm gonna, I've got 20 slides. I've seen, some, I've seen somebody um, deliver 150 slides in 15 minutes. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to skip some of the slides. But um, 
uh, like I said, we've got mission planning, we've got uh, um, launch out altitude of 20 kilometers or higher. Uh, the, the goal behind this project is, is to actually collect, uh, uh, prove the concept, collect the SAR, uh, uh, generate the SAR image. Um, we want to be able to watch the payload, uh, the, the platform, uh, track it when it comes down using a parachute retriever. We, we don't have any uh, data downlink. Uh, that's for the future. That costs a lot more money than we were funded for. So this is the idea. You launch the payload. Once it reaches the desired altitude, it, it collects um, images. It, it, this, this is a typical <coughs> image. It comes down, we retrieve it. We, we get the data and we, um, we, we generate the image. We do the processing. Um, we've got a lot of experience in launching balloons. Uh, but they're like balloons, different class, under four kilograms. The rules are different to something that, is, uh, that weighs about 30 kilograms. Um, I, I actually got the, the email from CASA today um, with a list of requirements, and it's massive. <laughs> so we're going to have to do, uh, go through this. The goal is to launch in about um, uh, one year, one, uh, 12 to 18 months. So selection, balloon selection, I'm going to skip through this. Just to tell you that balloon selection is important, we need about 4,000 um, cubic meters to lift uh, 20 kilograms. So we're looking at a balloon with a radius of about uh, nine, 9 meters. This is just a rough guy. Um, as I said, we, we are developing the, the balloon platform. What that means is that, uh, um, let me skip this. this is the, these are the blue sat guys and in, on one of the mission, typical trajectory. This is typical profile, but this is what I'm interested in, in talking about. The balloon system, the balloon um, is, the idea behind the balloon is that we want to standardize it so you can take the platform out, uh, so you take the payload out, put another payload in. Um, so similar to the idea of a CubeSat, we're gonna provide uh, the onboard computing, the power stabilization, possibly um, ADCS, for, for a, a SAR system, you want to be able to point the antennas to where you want to generate the image. Although, um, we're doing stabilization as part of this project. Tracking, comms is for the future, but although um, uh, command and monitoring is um, telemetry and tracking are part of this project. Termination, you want to be able to terminate the mission, and protection, you want to be able to protect your, the payload. So this is what the platform um, gives. Um, flight time, 90 to 180 minutes, that can be planned. Um, payload up to 20 kilograms, we've got some other specifications, although um, we want it, want it to be, we want to have sufficient memory to store the star data and we want it, um, the, the star data, and we want to have the, the, the payload be recoverable. This is one of our light balloon mission payloads. Uh, so you can't see much in there. We've tested this. Um, so up there, temperatures can go down to about minus 70. You've probably seen it on the first slide that we talked about it. So we need protection. We've tested it in, um, in a freezer down to minus 70. It works fine. Although what we've seen is that the uh, battery deck um, drain is a bit worse at low temperatures. Something that's probably CubeSats would know, developers would know about. Um, the SAR subsystem, this is uh, University of Pisa. Um, so this is a picture of it. It's uh, uh, FM, con continuous wave radar transceiver. It's, it says here under 10 kilograms. The goal is to get it down to about five or six kilograms. That fits within our budget well and up to one uh, meter resolution. So um, skip this and show you this. This is the um, the software tool for generating the images. This is actually as an uh, image um, uh, in Pisa. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about it. This is the Italian guys. Um, the challenges with developing a system like this, it's not a straightforward thing to develop. Um, we're limited in terms of payload weight, uh, power, uh, stabilization, attitude determination control. This is unlike um, a CubeSat where you've got three axes. This is actually, um, it's a different challenge. It's a, uh, it's tethered in one, on one side. So 
Uh, and it's also subject to uh, atmospheric buffeting. Even up there, there is um, there is effect of the atmosphere. So you've got to be able to do deal with all this and position the timing. But the star stop system, it doesn't have the speed that um, a plane has. Uh, it depends on the wind. It can go up to the speed I showed. I skipped through the uh, the graph. The speed can be can be up to 250 kilometers per hour, but that depends on the wind. Um, it's a variable speed, so we need position and timing, uh, attitude variation, because like I said, um, so the idea is to offer, it's, it's a compromise, the design is a compromise between what the payload, uh, platform can do in terms of stabilization and position timing and what the SAS subsystem um, can tolerate. So for the future, I'll, this is the last slide, I'll skip through quite a lot. Uh, for the future, so the, so the project at the moment, um, we've had one year of the project, We've, um, we're progressing really well. The project, like I said, is um, at UNSW is mainly being executed by the group from a group of volunteers, which makes it a challenge, very uh, big challenge. But they're they're uh, really enthusiastic, and that helps. Um, for the future, uh, we we are now looking at uh, getting all the paperwork through CASA to, to fly the heavier mission. We're going to be doing some light missions, more light missions in the meantime. Um, we designing things like the enclosure, we're, um, we're finalizing the, the, the design, working with uh, PISA. Um, for beyond the project, we want to uh, add a data link, obviously, so you can get the, the, um, the data live. Uh, possibly onboard processing as well, because that, that helps with things like um, um, uh, you know, getting uh, reasonable better images. Uh, engagement with the uh, industry and end users. Uh, as I said, the uh, the balloon program is not just about the SAR system. That's what we're funded to do. But the original idea was to have a um, something for outreach, something <coughs> that for science. You know, you can. Uh, Brad was talking about putting a telescope on a balloon. Uh, if we develop the capability to offer it to people who've got payloads that can that need flying, we can do that. Um, and I think that. Thank you. Time for one question. Thanks for being on time as well. One question, maybe? Yeah, Paul, yes. You've got a square payload box that's flying virtually yeah. at a screen level. How, what stabilization? How are you going to stabilize it? This is not what's going to fly. This is just for the, uh, we're doing a lot of, we're doing small uh, light balloon missions at the moment, and our objective is to collect. Uh, environmental data, and that's what we can do in that. Um, the, we, I mentioned in passing that what we're doing now is designing the, uh, the enclosure to be aerodynamic um, and uh, the stabilization. <laughs> we're investigating, um, obviously, for the requirements of this project, um, everything from uh, passive to, to active. We've got a certain budget for that. Alright, thanks Elias. Um